Hey, what's up, friends? Welcome back to Babel on Talmud. Today we're studying Daf Kuf Ches of Masechta Shabbos, Daf 108. Um, yeah, cool Daf. It's not too challenging. It's not too challenging. Lots of like agotic. I don't even know if agotic is the right word, but yeah, that kind of a vibe. Let's get started, friends. Um, we're four lines into the page on Daf Kuf Ches Amur Aleph. Chai of Chule. So we had said in our Mishnah that, um, Basically, if you bruise a uh, bird or a undomesticated animal, you're going to be chayv a korban chatas. So, I'm um, who knows? Okay, so basically, the fact that you're chayv to bring a korban chatas for a bird, if you bruise it, means that the a bird must be considered to have or to have hide. Okay, I'm um, Ravuna says Ravuna. Kosvin tefillin agabe or shall of tahor. Okay, you would be permitted to write tefillin on the hide of a pure bird. Okay, fine. You hear that, friends? You can write tefillin on bird skin. Okay. Amr of Yosef, my kamash milan this leor. So Rav Yosef says, what's the big deal? What what what's Rav Huna teaching us that birds have hide? Tanina, we already know that from our mission, of course. That if you bruise a bird, you will be chayv for bruising on Shabbos, which means that birds have hides. Abai says to Rav Yosef, what do you mean? Rav is teaching us a lot of stuff. Because if we only had our Mishnah, Because if we only had our Mishnah, which says that you're chayv for bruising a bird, so I might think, okay, sure, it has a hide, but that hide, because of all the feathers on the bird, that hide is going to have lots of holes in it. And because of all the holes, maybe I shouldn't be able to use bird hide for its film. Kamash Malan, so rather says Abai, what Rafuna is teaching us is that the Amir bin Mayrava, like they say in Eretz Yisrael, that kol nekev shadio over salav eno nekev. Any hole that the ink of the tefillin, or the ink of whatever you're writing, would um, pass over it, i.e., and not, I guess, go through to the other side, so then it is not considered a hole, and you would be allowed to use it for tefillin. Okay? Masav Abzer, Abzer asks Akasha, Bichnafav, oh, very good. So it says by an olas ha'of, very exciting, that when you bring a korban ola, Korban Ola, of course, is a uh, sacrifice that goes 100% on the Mizbech. It's 100% for God. Now, by in Korban Ola, that is a bird. So the interesting thing is that you actually put the bird on the Mizbech with all of its feathers, right? In general, you remove the hide from a animal. However, the bird you put on with its feather. And the reason is because a bird offering is generally for a poor person uh, who can afford the more expensive offerings. And therefore, um, it wouldn't, you know, if you take off the, um, feathers from the bird so that you wouldn't really be putting very much on the mizbech and it wouldn't look very mechubad for this, um, offering that looks kind of very small. So in order to make the offering look more wholesome, you put it on the mizbech even with its feathers. And even though, um, you know, the feathers won't smell particularly good when they're burning. So now, so it says dar in bich nafab, so that you put the, um, Bird on the mizbeach with its feathers and of course with its skin. So or so to say that even the hide, even the skin of the bird, is you're permitted to put on the mizbeach. Now, Reb Zera asks visakadaitech orhu, and if it would enter your mind that the skin of the the bird of the bird is considered like hide of an animal, well then, hechi marbile kra. So Ibzera wants to say, how could it be that the Pasuk would say that you're allowed to put the skin of the bird on the Mizbeach if the skin of the bird is like hide, is like or? Because after all, we know that by korbanos, from animals, you have to remove the or from the animal. So if we're saying that the skin of the bird is like or, well then how could it possibly be that the Torah is saying that you're allowed to put the bird on the Mizbeach with its feathers and with its skin, if its skin is like or, and we know that or needs to be removed um, before the animal or the bird is put on the Mizbeach. 
So that is Abzera's kasha. How could we be assuming that animal, that birds have or if we're saying that the or of a bird is allowed to go on the mizbeach or is not allowed on the mizbeach? So the Abai or who Rahman Rabi Abai says Rabzera, that's exactly the point. The point is that birds do have or they do have hides. Okay, it's considered a hide. And that's the whole point, is that in general we don't put hide on the Mizbeach. But the Khidish is that when it comes to a bird, even though it has or, you're nonetheless allowed to put it on the Mizbeach, um, you know, out of Kavod for the Ani who is bringing his um modest korban. Okay, Ikeda Amri, the those who say Amri Bzera Af on an Amitanina. So there, those, so there are those who explain it in the following way, which is that Reb Zera isn't asking a question on 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 us, right? On saying that you're allowed, the Rav Huna saying that you're allowed to write tefillin on um, bird hide, and uh, the assumption in our Mishnah that 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 birds have hide have or because of the bruising. So Reb Zera is not asking a, a question; he's actually supporting that. He says, "Oh, by the way, Afan Nami Tanina." We also have a Mishnah, or maybe a Brisa. Usually Tanina would be Mishnah, but I hear, I think here in the Maisa it's a Brisa. Bichnaf of Lerabo says Sa'or. As it says that by, by an Ola Sa'of, that you put it on the Mizbeach with its feathers, i.e., including its hide. Now, Iyamart Bishlama Orhu, and now Rabzer is saying, you see, now I understand if we're saying that, that birds have hide, that's exactly the Chiddush. That's why I needed a pasuk to tell me that even though in general we don't put hide on the mizbeach, however, in this case, you would be allowed to put the hide on the mizbeach uh, of the bird um, out of out of out of um, respect for the uh, korban of the ani. Eli lav orhu amai itzdruch kral rabuye. But if you would say that the skin of the bird is not considered or is not considered a hide, well, then why would I need a pasuk to tell me that you're allowed to put it on the, on the mizbeach? Of course you're allowed to put it on the mizbeach. Why shouldn't you be allowed to? So, Amr le Abaye, the olam emelach lav orhu. Abaye says, no, really, I'll make the argument that the hide of a bird is actually not considered, that the skin of a bird is not considered hide. And why do you need a pasuk to that, then include that you're allowed to put the skin of a bird on the mizbeach. Because I think that even though it's not or it's not a hide, but it's got all these little holes on it, and maybe it's like a little disgusting. Um, for whatever reason, and therefore it might not be allowed. So kamash malan that even with all of its holes and everything, it's allowed to put on the mizbeach. Okay, fine, very good. Boy, mine, my bread of Avina, my of Nachum by Yitzchok. So, my bread of Avina asked the Kasha from Rav Nachum by Yitzchok. Ma would lift of Tfilin Agabi or shall dog Tahar? Hmm. Can you write Tfilin on the hide, on the skin of a pure fish? A salmon. Can you write salmon skin Tfilin? Sounds pretty fancy, right? Yeah, it does. So Nachum Bar Yitzchak responded to my Bar Yitzchak, let's wait until Eliyahu Anavi comes and he'll tell us. The Gemara says, why do we need to wait until Eliyahu Anavi comes? What, what, what's he going to tell us that we can't just answer now? Right? And as Rashi points out, in the Dibra Maschil, my Im Yavu Eliyahu V'yomar, Heter V'isar in Talibo, Dilo Bashamayimi, we, you know, Isr ve'eter, whether something's mutter or asr, is, we don't have to wait for Eliyahu and Avi to tell us that. Lo bashamayimi, the Torah isn't in heavens, it's here on the earth, it's whatever the rabbis say, that's, right, that's what the halacha is. And therefore, we don't need to wait for Eliyahu and Avi, you know, there's never a situation where it's like, oh, we don't know the halacha, we're gonna have to wait until Eliyahu and Avi comes so he can tell us the halacha. That's just not the way things work. We decide what the halacha is. And therefore, what could it possibly be that he had to wait for Eliyahu and Avi to come in order to tell him? Elam, if you're gonna say Ida Isle or Idele Isle or, if you're gonna say, well, Eliyahu and Navi's gonna tell us if a fish has skin or not. What do you mean Eliyahu and Navi's gonna tell us? Ha Khazinan de Isle or. We can just see. Go to David Agim and Shuk Machne Yehuda. Take a look at the fish. And you tell me, do they have skin or not? 
Of course they have skin lemaisa. Ve'or, and more so, hatnan, atzmo sadag ve'oro, matzilin ba'ol ames. We even, and you know what? If going to David Agim doesn't work for you, maybe you're too busy. Well, Mishnah, you can learn a Mishnah. Everyone's got time to study Torah, right? So, we have a Mishnah. The Mishnah says, that the bones of a fish and its hide are able to save something in, in oil ames. You know, if you have, I don't know, I guess if you wrap up epis in salmon skin something, so the thing will re- remain tahor in oil ames. So I think the point being that um, we see that we're assuming that fish have hides and that those hides are able to save things in oil ames. So clearly fish do have hides. So we don't need to wait for Eliyahu Navi to tell us whether or not fish have hides. We can answer that on our own. So what could we possibly have to wait for Eliyahu Anavi to tell us about fish, about salmon skin tefillin? Wow. Sounds like a very exciting Indian. Salmon fish tefillin. Salmon skin tefillin. Alright. Interesting. So rather, Eliyahu Navi is going to come and tell us whether or not there is still some kind of a zuama, some kind of a sweat, some kind of something disgusting on the skin of fish or not. So I know the article mentioned that, I, I don't know, two ways. One is like whether it gets rancid in the long term, but that again we can observe. Uh, apparently there's some other opinion that maybe there's some kind of spiritual uncleanliness to like fish skin and Eliyahu Navi is going to come and tell us whether that, you know, whether that is of concern. So I guess, I guess in the meantime, maybe then we shouldn't, we should hold off on our salmon skin tefillin because, um, we need Eliyahu Navi to tell us if there's still zuama on it or not. So, all right. Maybe one day. That'll be very interesting. Friends, let's move on. Shmuel Vikarna, Habu Yasve Aguda Dinar Malka. Oh. So Shmuel and his buddy Karna, they were sitting on the bank of Nahar Malka. Now, in the article, they said that Nahar Malka is um, the 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 um, Euphrates, the Euphrates. Now, Shmuel lived in Narda, and Narda was right next to the Euphrates. And also, we see sometimes right that right that um, Shmuel talks about that he asks like the Nachusayama to the fellows who go down to the sea. So I think he, he was close to the Euphrates. I guess he, you know, that's what was going on over there. Okay. So Shmuel and Karna were sitting by the Euphrates. Chazinu lemaya de kadalu va'achire, and they saw that for seemingly no reason the waters were going crazy. There were big waves, and there were the 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 right, the, the, the what 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 what, <laughs> what did George Costanza say in the in, with the marine biologist? What was it the 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 sea was angry that day, my friends. Something like that, right? Anyways, well, the sea, well, the sea was angry that day, and um, and so uh, and it seemed for no for no reason, right? It was a beautiful day, and yet you know the waves were going crazy. So So Shmuel said to his friend Karna, "I know what's going on." There was a great teacher. Who's coming from Eretz Yisrael to Bavel, the Chayish and he is having a stomach bug on the boat. Ay ay ay, the Kadalu Maya Lakbule Ape Kame. And what's happening is that the water is coming up to create a shield, a barrier, a wall around the boat, so that he can go to the bathroom off the side of the boat. And we shouldn't have to see, he shouldn't have to be exposed, right? Meaning nobody should have to see him. It's Kailui as the water is creating a barrier, a wall to give him privacy. Zil, Toile Akankane. And then Shmuel said to, um, Karna, so he said, look, there's this boat coming into dock. It's got it for sure. It has a great rabbi who's coming from Eretz Israel. Go and see who it is. Toile Akankane. Give him a faher. Go, go and, you know, literally like smell the jug to see if the wine is still good or if it's vinegar, right? Go, go and test this guy out to see who he really is. Friends, who do you think it was? Who do you think it was, new? Who do you think it was, friends? Shmuel is sitting on the bank with Karna. Who's missing over there? 
Who Shmuel's buddy? Rav. Rav, we know, right? The Gemara in Sanhedrin, Dafei Amoralv, Kinoch is Rav Lubavel, right? So Rav went from Eretz Yisrael to Bavel. This was the meeting of Shmuel with his lifelong friend in Chavrusa Rav. So now, this was their first interaction. Shmuel says to Karna, I guess this was the last time we hear of Karna, but I guess from then on, Shmuel and Rav became lifelong buddies. But uh, okay, at this point, Shmuel was sitting with Karna. He sends over Karna. He says, no, Karna, give him a faher. So Azal Ashkechei le Rav. Oh, so Karna went and he found Rav. After a long trip from Eretz Yisrael, stomach bug. What does he say? He doesn't say, Shalom Aleichem, I'm Karna. Amr le Rav, Karna says, Minayin shen kosmin tefillin ela agabe or behema tahora. First thing, he cuts right to it. He says, no, Rav, before you do anything, tell me. How do you know that we wrote, that we only write tefillin on the hide of a pure animal. So Amr Lei, so Rav says, well, Dichsev, as the Pazik says, um, so that the Torah of God will be, it says by Tefillin, said the Torah of God will be in your mouth. And we saw this also on Daf Chofres Amud Beis, only 80 pages ago. Oof. We've done a lot, friends, in Mesech to Shabbos, and we still have a lot to go, but we've done a lot. So that the Torah of God will be in your mouth. That which is Mutter, in your mouth, and therefore, it has to be from a pure animal, that it's mutter to eat. Minayin shu adam. How do we know that blood is red? Meaning that tamnida is dafka red blood, right? There's different types of, you know, there's tahor blood, there's tami blood. How do we know that um, damnida is dafka? We're looking for shades of red. Shinamar, as the Pesach says, Vayiru moav mineget esamayim adumim kedam. That moav saw the, um, um, uh, from, from, from opposite them, that the water was red like blood. Oh, so we see that blood is red. Oh, and then Karna asked Rav, he says, No, how do you know that Prismila is Shiba Oso Makom? It's on the penis of a, of a boy, right? Maybe it's somewhere else. How do you know that that's where it is? So Nemar Khan, Orlaso, Nemar Lahalan Orlaso. Well, it says Orlaso by Prismila, and it says Orlaso by Orla, right? It says Orlaso by when you plant a tree, so for the first, through a fruit tree, so for the first three years, you don't eat the fruit. It says Orla over there. Well, just like by Orla by fruits, well, it's on something that creates fruit. So therefore, Orla by Brismila, the Orla that you remove is also going to be somewhere that creates fruit, i.e. the penis that creates babies. Okay? And I guess those babies are the fruits. Very nice. Ema libo. So Karna says, yeah, but maybe it's the heart. Maybe instead of learning out from Orla by fruit, learn out from the heart. Maybe you, you know, stab the guy in the heart and that's the bris mila. And, um, okay, as it says, umaltem, and you remove the Orla of the heart. Ema ozno. Maybe you kind of slice off the ear. Dichsev hine arela oznam that their um, ears are covered from listening. So done in Orlaso Tama, me Orlaso Tama, and done in Orlaso Tama, me Orla, me Orlas Sheena Tama. So Rav said, yeah, but there's a difference. When it's, by Prismila, it says Orlaso. By um, Orla, like by fruit trees, it also says Orlaso. However, by the heart, it says um, Orlas Levavchem, and by your ear, it says, Arela Oznam. The difference is, Orla So includes it, right? I, I, this is like some kind of grammar thing, right? I, it's funny, I know like Hebrew grammar a little bit better than I know English. Well, I don't really know any English grammar, but I know how to speak English effectively, I would say. Anyways. Um, no. So by Orla by Brismila and by Orla by, by, um, like Orla by fruit trees. So it says, Orla So. It's Orla, right? And whereas, let's say by the heart, it's orlas levavchem. Keilu. Or, or, orlas is not a word on its own. It, it needs, you see, I don't know these words, but it needs like something to be describing. The orla of the heart. Also the same thing, arela oznam, right? Their, their, their ears are covered, but like keilu, arela can't stand, arela what? Well, arela oznam. Orla, orla so means it's or la, I guess, you know, whatever context we're in, but it doesn't necessarily need, it can stand on its own, that word. So therefore, 
We're going to learn or la so from or la so, but we're not going to learn or la so from or las or are la, things that aren't complete in their own right, but need sort of another word to go along with them. That's why we can learn it out from or la by fruit trees, and therefore it is on the part of a man's body that creates fruit. Okay? Amalei Maishmach, so then Rav says to this fellow, he says, what's your name? Karna. He says, my name is Karna. I guess they were having this whole dialogue before he even introduced himself. Very nice. So Rav gave him a bracha. He said, may it be the will of God that you should get. So Karna, of course, means a horn. A Karen is a horn. So, Kar- so Rav says, may it be the will that the Abishter should give you a horn in your eye. <laughs> okay. And I guess that they were friends. Lifelong buddies from, 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 from then on. Okay, very good. Um, the Sof Aile Shmuel of Eisei. Now, after this uh, encounter, Shmuel now brought Rav to his house. Ochle Naima de Saire, and um, Shmuel gave Rav a barley flat, barley uh, bread, the Chasa de Harsana, fried fish. Vashke Shechel gave him beer. Velo Achvele Beisakise, and he didn't show him where the bathroom was. Kehi de the so that Rav will get diarrhea. Oh my gosh, that, this is like some welcome, man. You know, Rav, Rav comes from Eretz Yisrael to Babel. He's, he's on a boat. Who knows what's going on in that boat? He has a stomach bug. He's feeling terribly. First he gets off the boat and some stranger is giving him a faher before he even introduces himself. Then he goes to the stranger Shmuel's house. Shmuel's giving him fried fish and, uh, and, uh, what, what else did he give him? Barley bread, beer. Just said, it said, it said he can, you know, get diarrhea. He's like, what the heck is going on in this place? What are these people trying to do to me? So now apparently, Shmuel, as Rashi says, Shmuel in the Deba Maskal Ochli Naima de Saire, he says, Derofe Haya Shmuel. Apparently Shmuel was a doctor. And we're going to see some of Shmuel's remedies on the next Amud. And, but apparently Shmuel was a doctor. Now, it doesn't really get better than that, right? A Tamil Chacham and a doctor. Wow. He must have been some catch, huh? Anyways, but Rav apparently didn't think so. Light Rav v'Amar man de mitzayron lo lukmua le bane v'chenav. So Rav said, and he cursed Shmuel and he said, somebody who is giving me such pain, such difficulty, such un- discomfort, he should not have any sons. And so happened. Shmuel did not have any sons. Of course, there's the daughter of Shmuel. Uh, right, um, that unfortunately was taken captive. Um, that was one of the daughters of Shmuel. They didn't have any sons. All right, yeah, interesting introduction to Ra from, of Rav to Bavel. Okay, says the Gemara, Kitanoi, uh, like a mach- so it's machlokis tanoim lemaise. What's machlokis tanoim? Minayin lemila shibosu makom. Oh, okay. How do we know that bris mila is on the penis? Shinemar, as the Pasuk says, Nemar Khan or Lasov, Nemar Lahalan or Lasov, Malahalan, Davashosa Pri, Afkan Davashosa Pri, Divrab Yoshia. Oh, very good. So, well, it says by Bismillah, um, or Laso. It says by Orla, by, uh, uh, trees, or Laso. So just like over there, it's, um, uh, something that creates fruits. So also on the man, it's gonna be on the part of the man that creates fruits. That is Rabbi Yoshia's opinion. Rabbi Nasan Omer. Says the Holy Rabb Nasan, No, you don't need that limud. That um, a zakhar, a male, who does not um, do bris mila. So, so where, what, what's this bris mila? What does that have to do with zakhar, with males? Well, it's done on the part of the body that is different between males and females. Okay, very good. Taner Abanan, the rabbis taught, Kozvin Tfilin Algabi or Behema Torah, Algabi or Chaya Torah. Okay? So we learn in a Bryce that you're allowed to write, uh, Tfilin on a, on the hide of a pure animal and on the hide of a pure undomesticated, right? Pure domesticated animal and the hide of a pure undomesticated animal. Okay? Very exciting. Algabi or Nevelo Sutrefo Shelain, and not just, um, domestic and undomesticated pure animals that were shechted, but even on domesticated and undomesticated hides 
of pure animals that just kind of died. Nevela, Utrefa, or they had some kind of a disease. No problem. You can still use their hides. Vinichrachos besairan, and you can wrap up the parchments in the hair of these animals. Vinisparos begidan, and you could sew shut the boxes with their sinews, right? They make everything in the tefillin, of course, comes from the animal. So the threads, the everything comes from the animal. And that the parchments of the tefillin are wrapped in the hair of the animal and that the boxes are sewn shut with the sinews, some kind of threads made from the sinews of the animals. But we don't write tefillin on the hide of an impure animal. Or chaya. A, a domesticated animal, the law gabi or chayat mea, and not on the hide of an undomesticated, um, impure animal. Venutsarik lomar al gabi or nevelo trefa shalen, and of course, goes without saying that you're not going to write tefillin on nevelas or trefas of uh, those impure animals. Okay? Venichrachim besiren venisparus begidan. And we don't wrap up the parchments in their hair and we don't use their sinews to create threads to sew shut the boxes. And this question, So, and this was the question that a Baisusi asked of Yeshua Girsi. And what's a Baisusi? So apparently there was a, where does he talk about this? I think maybe... I don't know, somewhere, maybe like in Pirkei Avos. I don't know exactly if it's in Pirkei Avos. Maybe it's like one of the Mephorshim on Pirkei Avos. Anyways, there's like, there were Tzidukim, which we've heard of, and Baisusim. They were like kind of similar, I think. So one of these Baisusim asked Rabbi Yoshua Girsi, So how do we know that you don't write Tfilin on the hide of a impure animal? How do you know that we don't write tefillin on the height of an impure, impure animal? Dirsiv, it's because, of course, right? Lamantia Torah Hashem Beficha, so that the Torah of God, it says by tefillin, that the Torah of God should be in your mouth. Midavra Amutar Beficha. And of course, that means something that is permissible for you to eat. Therefore, it would have to be a pure animal. El Meata, Agabe Or Nevelus Utrefos, Ali Kosvu. But if that's the case, then how can we say that you would be allowed to write tefillin on the hide of a pure animal, of a kosher animal, even if it's a nevela or a trefa. How come you'd be allowed to write tefillin on that hide? You can't eat nevela and trefa. So Amale, so Buda Girsi, he responded, I will give you a parable. So two people that were chayev, um, uh, death. They were chayv misa from the king. They 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 uh, needed to be executed, unfortunately. So echad argo melech, echad argo is is oh is baklitor. So one of these fellows was executed by the king himself. The other fellow had his chus of being executed by the executioner. Ezman meshubach. Which one would be sort of more meshubach? Haviomer zesh argo melech. It would, you know, be better, I mean, better is relative, I guess, in this case, but it would be better to be killed by the, by, by the king, right? So here also, if we're talking about making tefillin, which tefillin would you prefer? Tefillin of an animal that was killed by God, i.e. a nevela or trefa, or, 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 or the tefillin of an animal that was killed by some schnook, by some shmendrik? Of course, it's very mishubach, it's very high level to have tefillin of an animal that was killed by God himself. A nevela or trefa? El meata yeachlu. Well, if nevelas and trefas are so gishmak, well, then why can't we eat them? Amrle atar, amrle atar, amr lo sochlu kol nevela vaat amar yeachlu. To which Rabbi Yeshua Gersi says, "Well, the Torah says you can't eat nevela and trefa. You're saying that you should eat nevela and trefa. Of course not." Amrle kalus. He said, "Oh yeah, very good, very very good, satisfying gishmaka answers." Yeah, and I guess he became a, uh, he did, he became a Balchuva and became a very big tzaddik, this by Susi, I guess. New Mishnah in Osin Hilme Bishabbos. Okay, we don't make some kind of a brine on Shabbos. Alright, very good. Aval Oseu Esmea Melach, but you are allowed to make salt water. Now this brine was essentially just salt water. Okay, you take water and salt and then you would use it as some kind of a brine for preserving or maybe like, uh, 
what's that thing called? I always forget what that's called, but uh, it's called um, 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 fermenting. Fermenting. Yeah. I'm not much of a fermenter, but Lemaisa, I'm staying at this apartment that I've been subletting for like a few months already. Yeah, I don't know. I should really think of more more long long term solution maybe. But it's hard to make long term solutions now with this whole virus. Every day is something else. No, but there was a point. There was a point. The point I'm making is that my friend, whose apartment I'm subletting, he likes to ferment foods. His name is Jeff Handel. Great guy. Anyways. Uh right. We were talking about Hilmes. Right, exactly, right. Hilme. Right. So Hilme is basically a um Salt, water with salt. It's like salt water. And you would use that as like a brine to like, uh, pre- uh, ferment things or preserve things. I will also was mea melech. So you can't make this helmet, but you're allowed to make, um, mea melech, salt water. You would be allowed to make salt water. And you could dip your bread in this salt water and you could put the salt water in, into a, uh, into a cooked food and that's no problem. Seder. Omer Rabbi Rabbi Yossi says, you're not going to fool me. I don't care if it's a lot of salt water. I don't care if it's a little salt water. Don't call this a hilme and say it's usser and that's just salt water in there. It's mutter. It's all the same. Just like you're not allowed to make hilme, you're also not allowed to make salt water. I don't care that it's smaller quantities. Rabbi Yossi says, if you want to know what would be meimelech that would be permitted to make, if you want to know what kind of salt water you can make, it's you would first have to add um, oil either first to the salt or to the water. But you can't have the salt and the water interacting directly. That would be too potent. You have to um, first put wa- uh, oil in one of the ingredients uh, to ensure that it won't be um, too. It will never be a strong kind of uh, I don't know fermenter. Says the Gemara, Micah Omar, what is the um, Mishnah saying, right? What exactly is Hilme? What's Memelach? What is the difference? Amr Yehuda, Amr Amr Yehuda, Amr Shmuel, Hachi Kamar. This is what the Mishnah is saying. In Osen Memelach Merubin, Habal Oseu Memelach Muatim. So Rav Yehuda says the name of Shmuel that when it says in the Mishnah you're not allowed to make Hilme, but you are allowed to make Memelach, it means do not make a lot of salt water, but you can make a little bit of salt water. Dip your bread in there, put it in your food, it's fine. Amr, Rabbi Yossi, Falau, Hilme, Ben Ruben, Ben Muatin. Rabbi Yossi says, you're not going to fool me. It's still Hilme, even though you're only making a little bit of it. And there, well, so the Gemara wants to say, and, and therefore what? Meaning, all Rabbi Yossi is saying is that it's Hilme, whether it's a lot or whether it's a little. So does that mean that whether it's a lot, whether it's a little, it's Mutter? Or does it mean whether it's a lot, whether it's a little, it's Asr? So, that's what the Gemara wants to know right now. Ibailu, they ask, Rabbi Yehuda le'esor or le'esor or le'atir? Is Rabbi, is, is Rabbi Yossi saying that a lot of salt water and a little salt water are the same thing and therefore it is um, forbidden either way? Or is he saying that they're the same thing and therefore it, it's mutter even to have a lot of it? So I'm Rabbi Yehuda le'atir. So Rabbi Yehuda says this, he's coming to be matir. He's coming to say that uh, even if you create a lot of salt water, it's mutter. Hilme is mutter. So whereas the Tanakhama says Hilme Hil is Asr, only little quantities is mutter. Rabbi Yossi is, Rabbi Yossi is saying that um, even large quantities are mutter. Midilokhtani Rabbi Yossi Oser. And the fact that it doesn't say that Rabbi Yossi says that this stuff is Asr, it must mean that he's coming to say that they're both the same and that they're both mutter. Amrle Rabba. So now Rabba says to Rabbi Yehuda, his Rabbi, Rabbi Yehuda. Hamid Gitani Seifa Ve'eluein Me'melach Amutarin. But from the fact that immediately after Rabbi Yossi says that large quantities and small quantities are all the same, he then says, and by the way, if you want to make salt water, this is what you would have to do in order to make it. That must mean that what Rabbi Yossi is saying is that actually both Hilme and smaller quantities of salt water are forbidden. And then he's saying, if you really want to make salt water, do it in this manner. So clearly he's coming to... Um, Say that whereas the Tanakama allows Hilme, no, Tanakama does not allow Hilme, but Tanakama allows smaller quantities. Rabbi Yossi is saying, no, I don't care the size, the quant, you know, the size, the amount of salt water you're making. It's still going to be Asur. 
But if you want to have salt water, just add some oil first and then it's okay. Elo, I'm a rabbi let asor. Rather, Rabbi says that Rabbi Yossi is, 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 is saying that it's asur, all salt water is asur. V'chenam Rabbi Yochanan le'asur, and Rabbi Yochanan also says that Rabbi Yossi is coming to say that all salt water is asur, no matter the quantity. Tani nam we also have a b'risa like this. In osin me melach merubin lases l'soch akvashin shebesoch gistera. Friends, remember the gistera? Probably brings back good memories of uh, dafwa, like tzadi hay or something like that. Um, gistera was... Uh, yeah, Tzadi Yehemud Beis. Gistra was that shard of a klicheres, that when the klicheres breaks, you can use the gistra and put it like under to catch drips. Well, I, I guess that this is another use for a gistra, for, for pickling, uh, I don't know, pickling vegetables and stuff. Anyways, so, you're not, the Bryson says that, Einosin me melach merubin, lases l'soch akvashin shebesoch gistra, you wouldn't be allowed to make a lot of salt water to put into these vegetables that you're pickling in some kind of shard. But you would be allowed to make small batch, small quantities of salt water and put, you know, dip your bread into it, put it into some kind of cooked dish. Am Rabbi Yossi, says Rabbi Yossi, v'chimip pnei sh'alalu merubin, v'alalu mu'atin, halalu asurin, v'alalu mutarin. Says Rabbi Yossi, what, 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 what? Just because this is a larger quantity and this is a smaller quantity, there, therefore, this is asur and this is mutter. Guess what's going to happen? Yomu malacha meruba asur malacha muetas mutaris. People are going to come to the conclusion that oh, I see the pattern here. Doing a lot of malacha is what's not allowed, but doing a little bit of malacha on Shabbos is mutter, and that will lead to problems. Ella elu veelu asurin hein. Rather, says Rabbi Yossi, they are both asur. Now, friends, if it doesn't get clearer than that. And I don't know how else we could say it. So it's pretty clear from this Bryce that Rabbi Yossi's opinion is that what he's saying is that whether it's a lot of salt water, whether it's a little salt water, it's going to be forbidden. If you really would like to have salt water on Shabbos, this is what you can do. No sin shemen umelach, o shemen vamayim, uvavad shaliten mayim umelach lichatchila. You can first add oil to the salt, or you can first add oil to the water. As long as you're not adding salt directly to water, it would be okay. Just get some oil into the mix first before connecting the salt with the water. All right, there you go. Friends, moving on. Tani, Rabbi Yidu Bar Chaviva. Taught Rabbi Yehuda Bar Chaviva. In Osen Me Melach Ozen. You're not allowed to make strong salt water. My Me Melach Ozen. What is strong salt water? Rabbi Rav Yosef Bar Abba, friends, who's Rav Yosef Bar Abba? I don't know. Apparently, Rav Yosef, who, who which is interesting, because Rabba and Rav Yosef, right? They were contemporaries. But Rav Yosef was was Rav Yosef Bar Chia. This is Rav Yosef Bar Abba. So I don't know. But anyways, Rabbi Rav Yosef Bar Abba, Dami Tarvayu, Kol Shabetzat Safa Boyin. So strong salt water is salt water that a um, egg floats in it. The egg can float in it. It's strong salt water. Don't make that on Shabbos. V'chama, how do you, you know, what, okay, how much salt needs to go into this water in order to make this strong salt water that eggs float in? Abaye, Amar Abaye says, Abaye, tre tilse milcha v'tilsamaya. Well, two-thirds salt, one-third water. L'may avdele, Amar b'yabo l'mur yisa. Why do you make such a strong salt water mixture? Well, for brining fish. Herring. You want to make herring. So, take some water, take some salt, take some fish, make herring. It's also recommended that the fish be herring. That's important. Tani, Rabbi Yehuda Bar Chaviva, taught Rabbi Yehuda Bar Chaviva, in Molchen Snon Uveitzah B'Shabbos, we do not salt radishes and eggs on Shabbos. Rav Chizkiah, Mishmei da Abaye, Omar Tznon Asur Uveitzu Muteris. Rav Chizkiah said the name of Abaye that Tznon you would not be able to salt on Shabbos, but eggs you may. Omar Rav Nachman, Meresh Ava Malachna Pugla. Rav Nachman says, initially I would salt radishes on Shabbos. Amina Avsudi Kamaf Sidna Le. He figured, look, by adding salt to the radishes, I'm, I'm making them worse. Damar Shmuel, because Shmuel said, Pugla Chorfei Maile. Because Shmuel said that sharp radishes are very good for you. But by 
adding salt, I'm, 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 I'm weakening them. I'm, I'm releasing, I'm re- releasing some of the sharpness and therefore I figured I'm making them worse. And therefore, it should be okay to salt them. I'm not, in, you know, making them, not being misakin them on Shabbos, on Shabbos and being mekalkel. So it should be okay. Came the Shamayna, Leha, the Chiyasa, Ula, the Amr, the Mayrava, Malche, Kishre, Kishre, Mimal, Mamlach, Lo, Malachna. However, it says of Nachman that once he heard, uh, what Ula said when he came from Eretz Yisrael to Bavel, and he said that, that, that in Eretz Yisrael, they salt heaps and heaps of these radishes. So then I realized, oh, okay, I guess it's very good to be salting these radishes, in which case I probably shouldn't be doing that on Shabbos. Mimlach lo malachna. So I no longer salt these radishes on Shabbos. Tavule vade mat bilna. But uh, certainly I would have no problem, um, you know, dipping into some kind of a salt water thing, but not um, like creating pickles. From, uh, from, um, from these radishes. Alright, very good. Tani, Rabbi Yehuda bar Chaviva, Rabbi Yehuda bar Chaviva taught, Esrig tsnonu veitza. So, Esrig, right? Like a citron from like Sukkis. Tsnon, radishes, uveitza, eggs. Ilmale, in If not for its outer uh, peel, it would never leave your intestines. Very interesting. And now the 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 peel over here on the baits apparently is talking about the egg whites and like a hard boiled egg or something. All right, very good. And I guess that assumes that you'd be eating an esrog with its peel. Maybe like they were preserving it or something. I don't know. Kiyasa Rav Dimi Omar, when Rav Dimi came from Eretz Yisrael to Bavel, he said. May olam lo tovagava biyama this dom. A person never, um, drowned, never sank in the Dead Sea. Am Rav Yosef, afucha stom, afucha mila. Rav Yosef said, just like stone was overturned, well, also what this, the, the, these words of Rav Dimi are backwards. They don't make any sense. Gavru de lo tava, kshura tava. Well, I don't understand what he's saying. What, like a person has never drowned in the Dead Sea, but like a beam has drowned in the Dead Sea? Obviously not. The Dead Sea is like really salty and nothing drowns. So I'm going to say, No, Abaye, uh, says Abaye, no, he's saying, Lomi Baya, Lomi Baya, Kshura, Da Fili Bucho Memus, Chiba Olam No, even a, um, beam that in all the rivers of the world, you know, a beam is not going to sink, it's going to float. What he's saying is that even a person who, in general, people do sink in water. That's why we need to learn how to swim so that we don't sink. But in the Dead Sea, a person will not sink in the Dead Sea. The my nafkamina. What is the nafkamina? Kiha deravin. What's the nafkamina? Like, like, what's the point? How come Robin needs to tell us that um, the Dead Sea is so salty that uh, people don't sink in it? Like Abaye said the other day, Gemara Gemara is more today. What do we just learn? You know, do we just learn for like, like like songs? Like we just sing songs that whether or not they make sense or not. Is Robin just saying that like people don't sink? Like fun fact, people don't sink in the Dead Sea. No. So the point is, he's actually teaching us something. It's like when Ravan was walking behind Rabbi Yirmiya Aguda the Yama the Storm by the bank of the uh, Dead Sea. Omer lay, and Ravan said to Rabbi Yirmiya, Ma'u mimshe mehani maya b'Shabbos. Would I be able to take some of this water from the Dead Sea on Shabbos and rub it on my eyes? Apparently the assumption was that rubbing, right, right, that the water of the Dead Sea was good for your eyes. So Omer lay, shop your dummy. Rabbi Yirmiya said it's no problem because it's not clear, you know, if you just take some water and rub it on your eye, it doesn't look like you're necessarily doing refuah on, on Yom Tif, on Shabbos, right? You're just rubbing some water on your eye, you know, you could just be washing your face. But what about if I'm like opening and closing my eyes while applying water from the Dead Sea? There it's more obvious that I am, uh, you know, trying to do some kind of a healing. So Amrle Zolo Shamaiti. So Rabbi Yirmiya says, the truth is, I don't know the answer to that specific question. However, 
Kayotzi ba shamaiti. I did, I did hear similar teachings. What are those? Dam Reb Zera, said Reb Zera, Zimnin Amr la Mishmei Drav, Masna Zimnin Amr la Mishmei Demar Ukva. Okay. So Reb Zera, sometimes he would say this in the name of Reb Masna, sometimes he would say the following in the name of Mar Ukva. The point is that he heard it in the name of both of them. Sometimes he would say it in the name of Reb Masna, sometimes he would say it in the name of uh, Mar Ukva. Okay. Vitarvayu Mishmei Davua de Shmuel Vlevi. Amaran. Now, but both of them, nonetheless, they said the following. Basically, there was Marukva and there was Rav Masna. They would both say the following two halachis. Now, these two halachis were said, uh, one was from Avua de Shmuel and the other one was from Levi. Okay? Fine. Chad Omar, Yayin besocha ayin osr aldava ayin mutter. Okay? So one of them, either Avua de Shmuel or Levi, one of them said that Wine on top, uh, uh, inside of the eye on Shabbos is not allowed because it would be clear that you're doing it for refuah, but on top of the eye would be acceptable because it doesn't necessarily look like it would be refuah. I don't know, maybe you're somehow washing your face with wine. The Amr rok tefel afila gav ayin aser. The other one says that if it comes to spit, spit in the morning before you've brushed your teeth, morning spit, um, even on top of your eye, would not be allowed because it's clear, like, why are you putting spit on your eye? It must be for refuah. This time, Davua, okay, so, so the point being, so what was Ravin's point in saying, or what is it, Ravdimi? What was Ravdimi's point in saying that nobody has ever drowned in the Dead Sea? The point was that it's highly salty. Um, and that's why nobody is drowned. And the Nafkamina is, in terms of refuah on Shabbos, you have to, you know, it has medicinal purposes. Uh, it's special water. It's not just regular water. And um, it can be used for a full on Shabbos. Therefore, the question is, how exactly would you do it? You have to make sure that you're um, not being too obvious about it because we know that refuah on Shabbos is not allowed. So therefore, you wouldn't want to be too obvious that you're doing something for refuah. So therefore, we said that, um, you know, you'd be allowed to rub it on your eyes, but it sounds like uh, opening and closing your eyes might be a problem um, because it would be too obvious that you're doing it for refuah. So now the Gemara wants to suggest, so, so remember, we had these two statements. One of them is that you're allowed to put wine on top of your eye, but not in your eye. And the other one was that you're not allowed to put spit either on top or in your eye. Very exciting. Morning spit, of course. So the question, who, who said what? Which one's Avua the Shmuel? And which one was Levi? So the Gemara wants to say that so let's say that it's Avua de Shmuel who was the one who said that you're allowed to put wine on top of your eye but not in your eye. Midamar Shmuel, Shore Adam Pito, Be Biyain, Vinos na Gava Ayin Bishabis. Because we know after all that Shmuel says that a person is allowed to dip his bread in wine and apply it on top of his eye on Shabbos. So we see that Shmuel says that you're allowed to put wine on top of your eye on Shabbos. Shmuel the doctor was saying that on Shabbos, if your eye is bothering you, you're allowed to put wine on top of your eye. Now the Shmuel le miman. Now who did Shmuel hear this from? Lav the Shmuel le miavua. Did he not hear it from his father? And therefore it must be that it's avua the Shmuel who's the one that says that you're allowed to put wine on top of your eye, just not in your eye. But the Gemara says, come on, in the time eh. But according to that logic, Hadu Amar Shmuel, guess what else Shmuel said? Rok tefel afilo agabi. I and Usr. Well, Shmuel also said the other statement, which is that morning spit, you're not even allowed to put on top of your eye. Well, the Shmir Le Miman, who did he hear that from? Ilem the Shmir Le Meavua. So if you're going to use the same logic to say, well, Mistami heard it from his father, well, El Levi Vilochado Amar. But Levi then didn't say either one of the statements. Obviously, he said one of them because we said that Levi said one statement and Avua the Shmuel said the other statement. Rather, it must be that Shmuel heard one of them from his father. He heard one of them from Levi. We don't know which one he heard from his father, which one he heard from Levi. So therefore, we don't know which statement to attribute to Shmuel, Avua de Shmuel, and which one to attribute to Levi. Amr Mar Ukva, Amr Shmuel, said Mar Ukva in the name of Shmuel. So now as Rashi points out, and as we also saw in Dafnun, uh, Dafnun Dal, Ramabez, Dafnun Hey, which is already half a Masechta ago. We're on Daf Kuf Ches now. We're talking about Daf Nun Dalid. Okay? But anyway, so Rashi says over here, four lines to the bottom of Rashi, Mar Ukva av Ashkiach Gabi Mar Shmua av av Bezdin Ayah Biyama. So, Mar Ukva was the av Bezdin during the days of Shmua and he was also very regular 
to be um, by Shmuel. Okay, Shmuel and Marukva would hang out. And the Gemara, the, 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 uh, the Rashi had said over there also that Marukva was very wealthy as well. Amr Marukva, Amr Shmuel, Shore Adam Kilor in Me'er of Shabbos, a person is permitted to um, soak some kind of a, an ointment from before Shabbos. Benosin Algav, Algav Ein of Shabbos, Ve'en Ochoshesh. And he could then apply it on top of his eye on Shabbos and it, he doesn't have to worry about, you know, refua because since he's preparing it before Shabbos, uh, it's like a different thing and anybody who sees him doing it, so for himself, since he's performing it, uh, um, preparing it before Shabbos, he knows that it's only allowed because he prepared it before Shabbos and in terms of other people seeing him, uh, it's not a concern because uh, it just kind of looks like wine. So it doesn't necessarily look like he's, um, you know, applying medicine. They'll just think that he's using wine, which would, I guess, be more normal. Bar Levi Avakai Kame de Ukva. So Bar Levi was by Mar Ukva. Chaz Yedava Mayitz Ufasa. Now Mar Ukva saw that Bar Levi was opening and closing his, his eyes with this um, ointment that he soaked before Shabbos. Amrle Kulehai Vade Lushar Mar Shmuel. To which Mar Ukva said, Hey, Bar Levi, um, Shmuel certainly did not allow you to open and close your eyes. That makes it so obvious that, you, that you're doing it there for. Shalach Le Rab Yane the Mar Ukva. Rabbi Yanai sent a message to Ma'ukva, Lishadilan Mar Mehanach Kilor and Marshmuel. Ma'ukva, would you be able to send us some of this ointment from Marshmuel? Because Marshmuel uh, was the, was a doctor. And therefore he had these ointments. And, um, Rabbi Yanai sent to Ma'ukva asking if he could send back some, uh, of Shmuel's ointments. Shalach Lei. So Ma'ukva sent back to Rabbi Yanai, Shadurim Meshadarnalach. I'll send you some of the ointment that you asked for, sure. To lo teima tsar ayin on us, so you don't say I'm stingy. However, ella achi achi amar Shmuel. This is what Shmuel said. Tova tipas sonen shachris urchitzas yodaim v'aglaim becham and arvis mikol kilorin shibo olam. Better to put a shtickle, a drop of uh, cold water into your eye in the morning, and washing your hands and feet in warm water at night. That is better than all of the ointments that exist in the entire world. Okay. Tanin am yachri. We also learn in a brace like this. Amar Rabbi Mona. Mishum Rabbi Yehuda says Rabbi Mona the name of Rabbi Yehuda Tova Tipas Son and Shachas or Chitzas Yadaim Raglaim Becham and Arvis Min Kol Kilor and Shiba Olam and putting a drop of cold water in your eye in the morning and washing your hands and legs in warm water in the evening is better than any ointments that there can possibly be in the entire world. Who are you, Omer? Rabbi Mona would say Yad La'ayin Tikatzitz. If before you wash Netilas Yadaim in the morning you put your eye, your hand to your eyes. Better that your hand should be um, cut off. Yad lechotem tikatzets. The same goes for if you put your hand to your nose. Yad lepet tikatzets. And if you put your hand to your eyes. Yad leozen tikatzets. No different for your ears. Yad lechsuda tikatzets. I believe if you have a wound from bloodletting, do not touch that wound uh, before washing your um, hands in the morning. Yad the Amati Katsets. If you touch your penis before watching, washing your, uh, hands in the morning. Yad the Pitabas. If you touch your anus before, uh, washing your hands in the morning, Tikatsets. Uh, in all of these cases, better that your hand should just be plopped off. Alright. Yad the Gigas Tikatsets. Don't touch your beer vat, your beer barrel before washing your hands. So, basically just wash your hands and then you can touch whatever you want, I guess. Yad mesame, I'll come because your hand blinds your, blinds you. If you touch your eyes, machreshes, it makes you go deaf. If you touch your ears before washing your hands. Yad mile polipus, and if you touch your mouth or your nose, you're gonna get some bad smells coming out of your mouth or your nose. So, friends, wash your hands, and then touch whatever you want. Alright. Um, so there's, it's a little bit hard to kind of do a recap here, but, um, at the beginning we talked about like hides of birds, fish, writing tefillin on them. And then we started starting into like salt water discussions. Your Tanakama says you're allowed to make lots of salt water. You're not allowed to make lots, make lots of salt water, salt water, but you're allowed to make small quantities. Rabiosi says you're not allowed to make any quantities. You're only allowed to make it if you like add oil first. And, um, and then we got into all sorts of like interesting healing and remedies and things like that. Well, friends, I hope you enjoy Daf Kuf Ches of Masech the Shabbos. And I hope even more than this Daf, you enjoy your day or your night. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Peace.